Rank first versus rank 92nd. Sounds like an absolute stomp. Let's watch WNTD SES lose. Well, maybe he can surprise us here. Because he's going to be playing as the Roost, so he could be the tempo setter. Let's see what he's got in mind as we hop into Dry Arabia. First things first, I'm looking at that generation. I'm seeing a ball that is kind of situated in a location that could be exploitable for a Roost player. In fact, this is a delicious ball placement. Stealth Forest and Woodline. Mm. I can already sense the 31 gold from Hunting Cabin coming. Meanwhile, early movement out onto the deer. Looks like BC did benefit from the spawn here. Two deer stacks close together means you should be able to obliterate that advantage. Make sure that the bounty isn't too good for SAS. SAS, who I believe is already going to be up to three scouts in about 10 more seconds. Mm -hmm. I have to look at where the walls are located as well. You can already see he's checking for them. Uh, Beastie doing a good job of grabbing up as well, because you may notice that Beastie did, in fact, go for double scout. Lesson to be learned here. Doesn't matter what sieve you are, if the sieve on the other side is the roost, a second scout is worth the investment. At least if you're able to, to a minute degree, micro, that is. SAS skirting around, trying to get his hands on those deer. Beastie, what's the build going to be? Because so far, he hasn't tried to go for the early mill. There's no intent to go into farms. In fact, he hasn't even gone for wheelbarrow at all. Hmm, interesting. So it's not SAS, it's SAS. I mean, whichever one you prefer, dude. I'm British, so if you don't have, a, if you don't tell me your real preference, I'm just going to call you SAS. The OG elite force in the universe. Maybe universe is a stretch, but... Ooh! That's a lot of poopies going down. And SAS... Well, he's got his deer stacks. One reserve that he still needs to take, but I'm more concerned about the, the wolves. I am a little bit concerned, actually, that SAS is going to have baby levels of bounty. Okay, there, there we go. That, that rectifies it. I was looking for the, the wolves being brought back, and I couldn't see them anywhere. But it's only two wolves. Okay, third one. So this isn't too bad. He's going to probably get about 250 bounty. A little bit lackluster to what we used to seeing recently, but not too bad, considering Beastie was really on point with how he went for the distax and identifying that they were next to each other early on. I think that's the big difference maker. If, say, you had a, a distax over here and a distax over here, it's maybe a slightly different story, and we see him yoink a few more away. And why this is important, by the way, it's not just about the gathering rate, it's just the raw gold. If you can actually crack 320, 350, it's pretty comfortable for you because then you can actually afford uh, Blacksmith, the initial tech ops. Obviously, you have things like Wheelbarrow on the way. Wheelbarrow that is now coming, and with it, the tech ops should be available, so SAS will be able to make his way up. He's going to pull six villages. Wait, no, he makes a five. Interesting choice here. A lot of people tend to go six. The whole idea is you get a pretty optimal time for Golden Gate into the villager pool towards the boar. And the whole idea is that you pull the six work on Golden Gate plus two on the, the food line and then send one across to finish off like the last 10% on Golden Gate. This gives you an optimal timing to move out towards the ball. You block that off early on. You get your hands on a wooden fortress here and it prevents an English player even from being able to come in and harass you on that, that ball line. Having said that, I also wouldn't be surprised if SAS doesn't play for the ball at all because of the threat of English longbows. Because unless you can guarantee a pristine placement where... They can't flank attack you. The Lombos are going to reach around the sides and neglect the fact that you have the Wooden Fortress defense. I think actually if you do go for the ball play here, the best play you can make for SAS is to pull the ball to the, the, the southeastern side here into the Stealth Forest, drop a Hunting Cabin near the Stealth Forest plus Woodline, and then drop a Wooden Fortress ahead of that. And the whole idea is that you block off this whole northern side as well as part of the eastern. The only flank point that BC can grab you from is going to be on the south side. The south side is going to be easily defendable because should Beastie walk in here to try and snipe you, you can just wrap around with your own stealth forest and cut him down. Nah. And yeah, it looks like there's going to be an intent. Beastie with the read as well. He's like, no, no, no. I know exactly what you want to do. Wolf was missing in the center, actually. That's an extra 25 gold. A wonderful life for SAS. It looks like Beastie doesn't want to hang around, but he knows it is coming now. However, what can Beastie do about it? He still hasn't teched up. Eight villages have been pulled. Wood of Fortress is going to go up first. I wouldn't say this is the most optimal placement. 
It's not too bad, though. Like, the, it's going to achieve similarly. I just think that the Lombos can maybe reach you from here as well as here. So it gives one extra option over to Beastie. But it should be a very, very difficult option for Beastie to exploit because at the end of the day, by placing Wooded Fortress here, the Lombos will start to walk all the way around the side here or all, around, uh, all the way around the side here. Either way, they're going to put themselves between your static defense and where reinforcements should be coming from. So it's very dangerous for Beastie. Kind of curious to see if SAS um, will just escalate into archers. We're going to see him open the stables. BC, I don't know if he wants to go for the Lombo play. Because if you go for the Lombo play, like you've got to run a long way. And the most standardized opening for the Roos is going to be archery range plus stables. Even more so when they're playing against the English because you don't want to build spears. You know there's going to be Lombos as a variant. Meanwhile, Beastie, his variant play is going to be a secondary TC. I like this idea, but where is the placement going to be? Could be back corner to get onto the gold and berries. I don't know if I like it if he's playing towards the other side of the, the tree line. Like the awkward part is you don't really care about berries. But he just might be looking to tax himself hard on the wood. I think actually maybe extending it out a little bit would have been better. Maybe this side, but then you don't get the value of two resources together is the issue. It's just an awkward spawn. I think in an ideal world, Beastie would have preferred the gold to be here, and then he can play wood plus gold. Because right now, his only gold is on the front of his base. So in the event that SAS sets tempo aggression and builds a proxy base into archery ranges, he can do a lot of damage here. So we have archers. That's Longbowmen weaving their way in. Not able to do too much work though. And Beastie, of course, doesn't really want to build archers. He just wants to draw attention with a few troops, and now look to make his way up to a castle age as quickly as possible. SES. I wonder if we could get a second TC from him. The problem right now is he needs two bounty tickets. He is going on the gold, so this will support some night pushes, but I would also just love to see a secondary TC as a fullback plan. It might be that we see Castle H rushed first, because if he does scout out this second TC, what it tells him is that there's going to be a prolonged feudal from Beastie and a lack of access to Castle. And that means that you can rush Castle, get the lion's share of the relics, and then go for your secondary TC very freely as the roots. Now, it does mean that your eco count is going to be smaller for the next five minutes. But after that, the differential of having relics with passive gold income should balance out the difference. Outpost is going to be forced. There's a few horsemen running rampant around the base area. I was wondering when that defense was going to come out. Like, you just don't have a choice. You, you can't just go for this for free. The horsemen are going to be too much pressure. I do love that SAS went for a few horsemen because the whole idea is now he dictates midfield. You can't rush across the field with Lombos because <laughs> Lombos don't really rush anyway. And they'll be chased down and killed off very quickly. Your scouts can't freely scout because horsemen are quicker. Like, this is why I think horsemen are so important. No matter what your strategy is in the midfield, like, unless your goal is to build a proxy base to shorten the distance, if you're running cross map, horsemen are undisputed kings of feudal age timings. Knights are the only thing that can kind of match. And guess what? The person who has knights in this matchup also has horsemen. And also has his tech up. So he's going for that quicker castle age as expected. You just have to here. You don't want to go for the TC because this is too like high value. The only way in which SAS would have went for the TC first and then come castle later is if he didn't have mid-map control. But due to the mid-map control, you want to leverage that advantage. And considering the amount of relics that are within range, this is easily a four relic game. Tech up is at least going to be scoured, but issue for Beastie is Beastie built a handful of Lombos and went full on guard. Now, the whole concept for Beastie is in the next five minutes, like you inflate your economy to catch up in the next 10 minutes. The problem is going to be that five minute gap. That five minute gap is very exploitable for SAS if he relies heavily upon things like horsemen and knights and just tries to frequently raid a split up base. What I don't really want to see from SAS is a play into archery ranges now. I think it's a bait to go horse archers up against the English. The Lombos will tear you apart. And that's why I'm very happy to see that with this tech up, SAS has doubled down on the stables. We'll now look to push Castle Age Knights while he gathers up these relics.
Looks like he's going to play it out to the other board, just to try and snipe it down. It's actually quite remarkable how effective a few horsemen can be, right? Like you're seeing, it's only four melee resistance. These guys hit for nine. And they're somewhat tanky, so a decent play to get your hands on 75 gold. Won't allow him to unlock the tier three bounty system, but it's still 460 gold that he's got for free across this game. And a second board to play to. I think SAS might be expanding out in that direction. It makes sense. And there he goes. The reason this makes sense, by the way, is that Beastie has prolonged his feudal. He hasn't moved into castle, so he's not into knight aggression yet. He might go for knights, but if he does, he does so from behind on the count. So the only other option for Beastie is to go for a static formation, slow moving units, things like the archers and the man at arms. These units will never look this wide on the flank. If this was another centrally located boar, it's a more dangerous opportunity for SS to try and exploit. But this is pretty free. Looks like BC maybe suspected this was going on, but won't be able to do much about it. He could go to Knight still. The issue you always have with the Roos, and the reason why the Roos are one of the most effective civs at going for these ball plays, is their defenses, they only require one. It's Winning Fortress, Garrison's the entire ball collection crew. And the cool thing in that situation is, like, by comparison, any other Civ, they want to fully protect the Borg Gatherers, and they want maximum efficiency, they need two outposts. Two outposts cost 200 wood, compared to 175. And then, of course, there's the Aris Slits upgrades, everything else that comes alongside it. This is where Wooden Fortresses actually are more optimal. Yes, yes. Trying to get in position. Scouts out the tech up. So King's Pass now puts BC up at three TCs. Meanwhile, Relics slowly being gathered up. SES should be up to almost three Warrior Monks by now. That is the case. Troops stop piling the center. Looks like he's going to go for the four de defenses. This could play into a proxy siege workshop for siege. Remember, the King's Pass only has 2,500 HP. It does not last very long. That's why you see a lot of people, they try to lean their King's Pass to the back side of the base as opposed to the front. But the reason why BC does this format is he already has another TC in reserve. And the difference with the King's Pass is if it does go down, you can repair it. This TC goes down, it's just gone. A lot starts to come out now from BC, even including that little relic there that you can come back for a little bit later. BC definitely a player that likes to leverage these monastery plays, but on this type of configuration with this opponent or the way that SAS is postured, I'm not expecting him to go for them. Seeing a posture on SAS, lying up for a charge, but just trying to gauge the defenses of BC so far. This will be the ideal time to now go back for the secondary TC if SAS wants. He has got the ticket stockpiled up. It would put a bigger strain on his food right now, is the only concern. However, he has started to move out to more pocket ecos. Love the way that SAS is interacting with the map. You have about 75% map control right now. Maybe 65 Use that 65% to your advantage. Do something with it. And what he's doing is taking pocket ecos. The whole concept behind this is it delays your requirement of farms. It kicks that problem down the line while getting better gathering rates. And SES, nice quick reaction there. Didn't save all the villages, but only lost one in the end. He's going to force some idle time. Dive in in the meantime as he moves in on the secondary TC. SES now going in deep. He wants to draw attention here and snipe out eco. The whole goal is to keep Beastie on the defensive while he gets something a little bit stronger as a front line to come in from the front. SAS still not going for that second TC yet. Defense is distracted for the moment. Looks like he has forced an abandonment on the farms and because Beastie doesn't have the count, notice that he stands here and starts torching down. I love this play. Many people in this situation would just run around. Now, admittedly, it's only 37 wood per farm to replace for Beastie, but it's still idle time to rebuild, and it's still wood wasted. A few villagers get wasted alongside this clash underway. Attack speed buffer is going to be there for Beastie. This starts to turn to a bad fight now. SAS needs to back away from it. Min-maxing the Knights to get them out. Doesn't have chivalry, though, so you have to run them all the way back to base if he wants to keep them alive. But notice what's going to happen here. Beastie's going to give chase. SES can turn around. When he turns around, he can still take a clash that's favorable here, especially with the charge damage coming out on the scout. Surrounding onto one of the knights, brings him down, and that's going to net him a lead in this fight now. Neck and neck, it looks like the exchange is going to go in favor of Beastie due to the heavily damaged knights that SES had there. But at least draws attention back here, stagnates the count of Beastie, 
behind this, control the map now in favor of SAS again as he takes two sacred sites and I would expect him to be going towards that secondary TC now. The reason why that secondary TC is so important is you can still actually have knights being aggressive without sacrificing uh, you know, your full game. Like you don't have to go all in on one or the other. I think having that scalability is very important here. The lead is getting pretty big. And before anyone tries to highlight, like, why did SAS take that fight without Boyers? Boyers takes so long. Look at look at the time. It's a minute and a half, and it takes 700 resources. If he waits for Boyers' forward suit, all these farms are online and gathering at a phenomenal rate for Beastie. Remember, at this stage, he's getting an extra 25%. Pretty lofty sum, actually. He ends up getting, a, 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 well, basically better than Boar. He's almost at one food a second on these farms. Scary. You can't allow that to go down for free. So, shutting it down for a while, I agree with. The fact that he traded out Knights for the most as well makes it worthwhile. And it's why you see that Beastie, despite the fact he takes that fight successfully in his own base, he doesn't then ride out of his base. Instead, he has to keep guarding. Another wall up from SAS. So, trying to secure the back corner. Still has the deer here he hasn't exploited yet. The reason he's now walling up is he's reached that flip point where now they're more evenly matched in terms of their ability to gank with his Knights. So he doesn't want to leave himself exposed to that potential. Uh... Now, I am not an architect. I have admittedly built a very limited number of walls in my life. But I'm pretty sure that's not a wall. That's a gate. A gate without a door. which means that technically it's a terrible wall. SAS, look at this. Who cares about this wall? Doesn't matter. Beastie's never getting there. Beastie's falling behind. He has got the attack speed buffer to his advantage, but the night count definitely now of SAS. With the Saints Blessing as well, this could allow him to take a clutch fight, but needs to peel back out of range of the attack speed buffer. Spring on placements to assist, second wave coming in. Now remember, he's got these warrior monks on the front line that can heal, and look at the numbers escalate in SAS. Trying to reach a critical mass quick here, because the issue he has behind this, he hasn't transitioned into farms yet. The deer are drying up fast. And Beastie, you greedy, greedy boy. We know exactly what he wants to do here. When I see that much food floating, I know exactly what a filthy English player wants. He wants his Imperial Age. But the problem I see in this, when SAS clashed with that Knight Count and saw the lead he had, he should know that, that something's going on. Something's fishy here. The numbers just don't add up. All right? Someone's cooked the books on this one. Decap at least coming in for the Knights of the Proud around, but that's dangerous. That does offer up an opening over to SAS here, but he needs to torch through the walls. He allowed them to be built up. Weird that he didn't dive in considering he just saw the Knights now rotating on the west side. Defensive Knights are going to come up to try and defend against this. Should be able to take a damn good fight with the boys' fortitude and a lack of attack speed buff of a beastie. It could be a one-sided affair, but you need to wait for a few to stuck up. Well, lol. On the north side. Not going to work out. He could try for the quick rewall, but Beastie, he's not rewalling. Oh boy, that's too late. That's too late. Village is going to be sacrificed here. He could torch through again. Wait, SAS? A little bit of drunk driving here. Villagers, do you need to back off? The wall's now going to be breached again. A rewall coming out. BC trying to buy time because remember, he's diving into the base of SAS, but with limited nights, he'll do limited damage here. Knights are in. They got through the wall. Beastie didn't do it quick enough. He's in. He's unleashed like a beast. To slay the beast here. Textiles there to try and delay some of the losses. But Beastie is in trouble now. Needs to get more troops out to react. The night count is clearly in favor of SAS. And Beastie. That choice. That choice to dive into the base. The limited damage you've done may have sung you deeply here. So many villagers to be sacrificed. Beastie now looking for the imp up at the worst possible time. Hasn't invested just yet, trying to defend Lombos to hold for the moment, but the palings are gone. The Knights are going to stick on top of them like glue, and he's going to dive deep onto the Farlems to snipe out everything he can find. Plenty of villages on the goal line at the backside. A small handful of Knights can do irreparable damage here. Meanwhile, the other 
group chase after Lombos, pushing them further back, allowing them to be exploitative of the economical state at the back of Beastie's base. Three warrior monks will peel off. They spot them. The villagers bows out, trying to bring them down. Knight's now arriving as well. That's the premium target. That's the juicy, tasty underbelly he was looking for. Second wave coming in, heavily damaged, but they'll do plenty more damage to Beastie. Beastie now holding on to a lot of resources and not using any of it. After being up, Double the count on Eco. Now it stands at 80 to 58. SAS is pulling this back. Deeper he goes. Knights still outnumbered. Beastie still not reinvesting into enough knights here. More villagers standing their ground. I don't think he meant to do that. I think he was attack clicking with the archers. And the villagers joined in. To their downfall. So many dead. Such a big lead. Shrunk so low. Beastie will now go for the tech up. Wingard pass to be built. Last of the nights being cleaned up, but SAS likely to have a second wave coming in. Oh, yes. He's chopping through the trees. He's burning down the palisades. He's going to make his way in from multiple angles. Spruing on placements to try and slow him down. Still cleaning up the last of the nights that are still in the base. SAS proving an absolute frustration for Beastie. Beastie, yes, he'll get his tech up, but his economy is in shambles right now. Less than a thousand food a minute as the English at 21 minutes into the game. Sounds ugly on my ears. Now still a handful of knights unaddressed. The warrior monk, the heal, dude, the healing is ridiculous here. They need to target the warrior monk, not the knights. Lombos still being targeted down. Warrior monk finally gonna be targeted as he shoot over a long time ago. And new gaps in the walls on multiple fronts. Villagers moving in now. SAS looking to party inside Beastie's base. What's the play here? He could go for a wooden fortress drop right onto that wood line and block Beastie out. That's the only wood he has. He already chipped the back line. There's barely anything left here. This is the wood he needs. But he might not have it for long. Knights regrouping on the north side, trying to make their way through. Heavy damage onto the wall when SAS is relentless in his search for blood. DP goes, second wave of Knights is in on the primary TC, forcing idle time here. The farm's barely working now for Beastie. He cannot get a moment of reprieve here. Keep being built up. A favorable fight here. He's got the attack speed on his Knights. Should be able to beat out the Roost Knights. But once again, idle time. Once again, a new wave in, and the wave goes in on the keep. SAS, if he hits this straight away, he's going to block it. He needs to react right now, though. There it is. The charge comes in. Heavy damage on the village. They'll at least construct this up. However, it's not going to protect much here because he can just dive deeper. Look at the amount of villagers being pushed to the north. SES, if he pinches this right now, this is GG territory. He's getting rid of the knights, chasing on these villagers. Where the hell are they going right now? I don't think they even know. Beastie's clicking them places and they're going, okay, we'll go along with this for now. And they regret it. I mean, this is looking done. Beastie, his eco. He's almost 20 villagers behind SAS. This relentless push of knights has won in the game. And Beastie has been truly handled in this one. Wooden Fortress is to block off the wood line. New round of knights always coming in. The issue for Beastie is he choked on his own greed here. He could never reach the critical mass to defend. And as a result, SAS attack, attack, attack is how you win.